I can use the same with matching. Maybe. Where's the... Uh, Entirely different route for uh, doing our final projects and go with the sabermetrics of Mario Superstar Baseball for the Nintendo GameCube. Um, we were going to do a Wii version, but I don't have the Wii version. I know your kids play the Wii version, right? So uh, yeah, well, that might be playing Wii version anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, very, there's a lot of similarities, but um, this was the first one for the GameCube, so we decided to uh, go for it. Uh, just a little bit about Mario Superstar Baseball. It's clearly not supposed to be a realistic simulation of actual baseball, but it, actually, it does kind of hold up in that it still uh, gives you the traditional baseball elements with some Mario gimmicks. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, it was developed by Namco, released for the GameCube in 2005. Uh, it was the fourth Mario Sports title to be released for the GameCube. You know, Mario Sports are like everywhere. Now. Yeah. You see them on TV all the time. Um, so our question that we ultimately want to answer with this PowerPoint, and we'll probably not answer, not even come close. But do sabermetric principles apply to Mario Superstar Baseball? That's the question. So our prediction was no from the get-go, but you'll probably see what, uh, what happened. Uh, yep. So you want to explain the yeah, major we'll talk difference? About this is this is major difference. These are things, aspects of the game that uh, obviously don't translate. It's not actual. That a actual baseball does not translate into this game. Uh, pitching differences. The pitching is two-dimensional, as you might know. Our video clips. Right. You can't. There's no height. To the pitches, so yeah. Um, there's only three like types of pitches. There's different pitching like ability, but you can only really throw a fastball, a sort of a like a breaking ball kind of thing, and a changeup. Um, and there's magic in the game <laughs> that you know you can't. Yeah. Um, for hitting, there's um, not Have you everyone. Seen this game before, can you anyway. <laughs> we'll have what video clips of it during. That. Yeah, we'll have, and you, it'll. You'll be able it'll to share it. Uh, yeah. Then other is it hitting. Not every player uses a bat or a glove. Um, yeah. Base. Uh, there's there's this thing called chemistry where like if people that they're like friends with are on base, you hit better. You're, you're, which doesn't really happen in baseball, as far as I know. Um, <laughs> Your best friends on first base, you're not probably gonna hit better. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, and star swings are again magic. Um, and fielding, the, the ballparks, there's a lot of interference, you know, how in, in baseball everyone gets upset with just like fan interference and they, in this there's like the fireballs and plants and giant barrels and stuff and it's very dangerous. Um, there's no, yeah, there's no uh, defensive, you can't like position your players, it's everyone's just set and you have to deal with it. You know, infield in, no, you can't put on a shift. Um, and then uh, throwing ability again, if you're throwing to your friend, you throw better. Um, and then miscellaneous, uh, you cannot adjust uh, their lead on base. If you want to steal, you can't move closer or far or back to the to the base. There's a set distance. Um, the fatigue is not based on like how much you actually play. It's based on results, and it only works on pit it only applies to pitchers. Batters don't position players don't get tired. And uh, there's no injuries. Either. Yeah, there's no injuries, and there's no like awareness. Like the players are all pretty stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. But those are the major differences. Obviously, there's several more that we go into. But, uh, you know, that's those are, those you know, are the big, the most noticeable. Most, most noticeable right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have a little uh, intro video. This is taken right from the intro to the game. And it highlights some of the more uh, ridiculous things in Mario Baseball. The, the, the more arcade play. aspects of the. I don't know if we have Bonnie. I'll verify it. Should be beneath it. Give you all sorts of things like this.
we decided to, we did it with 20 star pitches each. It's unfortunately the game, the way the game's set up, it's not easy to simulate this over and over and over. You have to keep playing, replicate the scenario. So we decided 20 pitches uh, was enough for each, each player. A larger sample size would probably be a little more accurate, but that's pretty much the basic idea. Yeah. So then uh, we measured the, we just threw like 20 pitches like right down the middle to the AI opponents. And uh, we measured the balls in play that they hit on the star pitches. And we could come out with a star factor, which is just the percentage. Um, as you can see, Yoshi, whose in-game pitching rank is only four, actually had a perfect uh, one uh, star factor. So it might be, have been a something taken by the game designers to have a really good star pitch with someone who's not so good of a pitcher normally. Um, but Wario, on the other hand, it gets kind of short of the stick as that the star pitch is not very good and just not a very good pitcher either. But, uh, so factoring this in uh, might be a more accurate measure of star abilities in Mario Superstar Baseball for whatever that's worth. Yep. <laughs> and just so you know, the, there is a limit on the number of star pitches you can use, so it's not like you yeah, can just you can't throw that. disappearing fastballs at people. <laughs> over and over. That would, that would, that would, that's why the factor is significantly smaller than their total pitching rank. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Like the max, max of one. So yeah. We, and the, we felt that that was enough to, to, to quantify it because you could only use it in certain situations. Right. And it is just another weapon for the players to use as well. So like they could just use no stars throughout the whole game. And that would be probably their raw score for pitching. But if they decide to use those tools, that's what you get. So uh, much more interestingly, I think, is their star swings. There's a much more data to be collected here. Um, so again, it's the same type of thing you saw in the video clip, and uh, we measured, we went on, or we went on the average number of bases earned per swing. Uh, some players' swing resulted in just outs, like just fly balls, which is kind of unfortunate. But some resulted, like you saw, an inside the park home run, like a crazy thing. Although we didn't actually quantify that as a home run because we figured that the that was kind of an error on made a throw error, error on the cutoff, to the third, base. third base for no reason. But if he threw it straight to home, it would have So we just counted the triple. But anyway. Um, the point is that if you look at all the data here, again, 20 star swings for every, every player. Uh, against a, also against a constant pitcher, uh, we picked a very average pitcher to go with, someone of average ability. Um, so uh, you can see all the data here, and you can see that uh, Donkey Kong star pitch, or star swing, is much more effective than, uh, say, Yoshi's, for example, which is kind of, which is horrible. It yeah. results in an out it around a lot. It resulted in a lot of outs. A lot of outs. Almost always. So again, adding that to their uh, hit uh, in-game hitting rank, adding the average number of bases earned times the success rate of their star pitch, you can get more of an accurate measure of their ability. And it's actually kind of funny because this pushes Bowser above a 10, which would be a perfect 10. But uh, he's a, he is a phenomenal hitter. So yeah. uh, he's a great hitter in the first place, and his his uh, star swing almost always results in a line drive to the outfield. So this is really interesting. I thought it was really interesting to see how uh, star pitches actually, star swings if they're actually successful or not. Um, and it turns out that some of them were and some of them were not. Some of them were very high risk, high reward, like uh, Princess Peaches, for example, yeah. resulted in seven doubles, so, but 12 outs. So it's like if it wasn't caught, it was probably a double. Um, likewise with uh, Wario, it's a lot of triples, uh, but a lot of outs as well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, cool. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. But then you had something like Donkey Kong's, which was just always... Donkey Kong's was just like almost just always almost, essential, almost perfect. Almost a double unless you hit it directly to someone, which happens. But, um, yeah. I think my son can have some of the vintage right now and play the... when they play Mario Baseball. <laughs> you have to show that. You can have some uh, statistical advantage yeah. of his friend. <laughs> cool stuff. Alright, do you want to? <laughs> oh yes, the ballparks. The ballparks are their their own thing. This is wonderful. Okay, so there's six different parks you can play in in this in uh, Mario Superstar Baseball. There's the Mar Mario's uh, Stadium, Peach Garden, Yoshi's Park, Wario Palace, uh, Donkey Kong Jungle, yeah, yeah, and Bowser's Castle. And they all have their all their own uh, gimmicks, uh, except for Mario Stadium. Mario Stadium is just like a normal baseball park. Standard. The walls, the everything. There's no, there's no traps or anything. So that's the baseline. We we set that to one. Yeah. And um, so aside from that, we have Peach Garden where there's a bunch of blocks floating in the sky. So <laughs> that will either knock down fly balls or the balls will bounce off of the blocks and go out. So a bunch of pop flies will be home runs. 
Yeah, um, so yeah, a ball that would normally be a pop fly could bounce off of this block and then go out of the park for a home run. Yep. Uh, so that creates definitely an interesting. There's also a bunch of hedges that slow down ground balls, but that's not a huge yeah. thing. Um, Wario's Palace has uh, is a mess. There's along the foul lines. There's these this thing that these totem things that generate a whirlwind that catch the ball and it spins the ball around and then shoots it out in a random direction. <laughs> um, and then there's and then there's chain chomps in the corners, uh, the the back corners of foul territory that will come out and either attack the outfielders or the ball will bounce off of the chain chomps back into play. So it can, a foul ball can bounce off of these enemies back into play, back into fair territory, and count as a fair ball. Yep. So that makes for an interesting scenario. Uh, in Yoshi Park, there are giant piranha plants scattered in the outfield. So if you hit a ball at a plant, it can eat the ball and spit it out somewhere else, or it can attack a nearby player. Yep. So that's interesting to consider. Um, and Don Kong Jungle is probably the worst in that, in terms of hazards in that if a ball hits the outfield, almost always you'll have a barrel that is shot out of a cannon at you. So not only do you have to worry about catching and fielding the ball, but also dodging a giant barrel that comes at you, which can result in a ton of extra bases. Yeah, <laughs> it knocks the player out, and it's for whatever reason really difficult to switch to another outfielder. That's again, sit bad situational awareness. Bad situational the awareness. Players in this game do not back up. Outfielders yeah, there's no do not backup back outfielders. Uh, like if a ball hits a right center, either the center field to go for it or the right field. To go for it. They'll never both converge on it. Uh, it'll seem like you would think like one would back up the other, but that doesn't happen. So if a ball gets by your outfielder, it just goes to the wall. <laughs> and then Bowser's Castle, odd, oddly enough, you'd think it would be the craziest, but it's actually the most tame in that there's obstacles that prevent you from hitting home runs. So they actually keep the ball in the park a lot more, and the outfield is really shallow. So that would have a lower park factor. It's so we're going to try to talk about park factor based on hazards. I don't know how successful that will be. We're going to have one more clip of uh, nonsense. Yeah, all the things we just described. Uh, <laughs> this one uh, doesn't have any sound, so we're going to talk over it. Um, you can see that uh, Mario Stadium, this is Mario Stadium, it's pretty standard. Uh, you can see we actually lay down a bunt here. We're going to talk about bunting in a little bit, but that's a little example of how it's actually pretty effective against the AI. So yeah, Mario Stadium's the, pretty much the standard ballpark, as you can see when the ball squirts to the outfield. You know, equal dimensions all the way around, no real crazy hazards. Um, but just this is just a little example of how you can see how the pitching works in 2D in 2D space rather than a 3D space, and how um, you know just standard baseball protocol would work. So uh, now we have uh, Peach Garden, which is a little crazier in that we have floating blocks in the sky that the ball can just bounce <laughs> off of and redirect <laughs> elsewhere. So that can result in a lot of uh, craziness <laughs> and just confusion all around. Uh, this is Josh and I playing a bunch of matches. Uh, Yep. to get this, and you, you can bounce off no blocks and <laughs> yep. just go in all sorts of crazy directions. So that uh, is definitely something to consider. Uh, here's uh, what we were just talking about with Wario's Palace. It has these totem balls and these totem things here that can just, <laughs> that just <laughs> spin the ball around. <laughs> but I caught that one. I you did, you were a jerk. And that was... <laughs> and then uh, more nonsense in left field. If you hit the ball down there, the enemy can attack you out there. And knock the ball out. So and, now, and again, no one back. And no, yeah, no backup players. So everyone can just just kind of stands around. <laughs> um, this is Yoshi's, uh, Yoshi's Park. Park. You can encounter all these uh, plants out here that make it that difficult to field the ball. <laughs> they just attack you. So that can be uh, definitely tricky. They can also, uh, if you hit it at just the right point, they can take a ball that would normally land in the outfield and spit it out over the fence for a home run. Just kind of funny. <laughs> so it can lead to a lot of uh, confusion in the ballpark, definitely. Um, a lot of nonsense. And this is uh, Donkey Kong Jungle. Uh, you can see immediately uh, the ball can deflect off a little crocodile and a <laughs> giant barrel. <laughs> giant barrel. <laughs> uh, so if you don't, unfortunately, you kind of get <laughs> nailed <laughs> by a barrel. And, that, and again, no backup players, so that just results in everyone continuously advancing. Um, so it's Something to consider discussing park factor and other course hazards is another one. To the outfield, just another barrel to the face. You can see that, yeah, what would normally be a single turn into a double because of that hazard. So, uh, finally, you have uh, this, this last course, um, which you would think would be the craziest, but again, is actually the most tame. Those fireballs actually don't. Sorry, I'm It's pretty. <laughs> 
The uh, fireballs actually don't come up often enough, and this ball, which would normally be a home run, gets blocked, gets blocked by, that. So, uh, by the giant thing. So you can see that it actually would have a relatively low park factor compared to the rest. So um, just based on essentially playing over and over in personal experience, uh, we assigned sort of relative values to this, and we came up with this thing called hazard factor that would be multiplied to park factor if this were to be accurately statistically measured. And uh, Mario Stadium would have a one because it's the average. Uh, it's the average of MLB park factors, so you don't have to worry about that. But say like Peach Garden would probably have the highest because balls can hit off the of blocks, bounce off the of blocks, and go into the, uh, be a home run or just go in all sorts of crazy directions. Uh, others would also be positive, such as Warrior Palace, Yoshi Park, and Dunkin' Jungle. Um, but Bowser Castle would actually be relatively low because you have those things that block home runs. So we just came up with this uh, theoretical model that if you were to measure park factors for Mario Baseball, this is what you would you'd have to deal with. Um, Did you have those factors, or is uh, it was, the problem is the lack of data that was collect that would be collected for uh, home run home you know home runs allowed, home runs scored as in a way because that it doesn't really work that way. There's no seed. There's no seed. There's no like dynasty yeah, mode or anything like that. So we just have to deal with what we got <laughs> essentially. Um, do you want to talk about bunting? Okay. All right, yeah. yeah. The, um, we, we went into bunting in uh, stolen bases, and um, we've gone over it several times. So sacrifice bunting is not worth it. Trading out for advancing base is a terrible idea. And stealing should only be uh, attempted if you're going to have a greater than 75-ish percent success rate. But in Mario Baseball, the strategy is a little bit different because bunting is a lot, is really easy. You can, if you're good enough at it, it's pretty much automatic. The, the AI, like when you bunt, the AI freaks out and they don't do it. They don't handle it. They don't field it very well. And then, um, and it's easy to control where it goes. And um, if you have a guy on third and you lay down a bunt, unless you really screw it up, he's probably going he's gonna to score. So, um, See, uh, out of 20 suicide squeeze bunts in play, 14 of them were successful, and of the six that weren't successful, some of them were just ridiculous. <laughs> just the plays that happened were just awful. But um, so yeah, bunting is bunting is um more effective than um than it would be a normal MLB normal baseball, baseball so. because it actually goes for a hit a lot. Yeah, it goes for a hit a lot, especially the speedy character. You can get down the line pretty quickly. You can't pull the third baseman in. Yeah, no, that's, there's again, no defense defensive adjustment, defensive so you can't bring like corners in or infield in or anything like that. So that's why bunching is so effective in this game. Uh, likewise, stolen bases um, aren't as much uh, aren't as effective in this game, but are still more effective than an actual baseball because characters are categorized <coughs> based on different types. So you have power characters, you have speed characters, and speed characters uh, rarely get thrown out when stealing second base. If they can pretty much hustle down the line and get there uh, almost automatic, unless you have a catcher with a fantastic arm. There's really, yeah, there's only, really only one or two characters in the game with a strong enough arm to throw out a character that's, that has any kind of speed. And also you can, on your way to second base, you can just turn around and go back to first base. And the, like the AI yeah, won't throw you was, out. Uh, the AI is, yeah. The AI opponents aren't programmed to get players in rundowns. Yeah. So if you get caught ceilings a second, you can actually just turn around and go to first safely, and there's no penalty for that. Yeah, so it, makes, it makes both stealing and hit and run. Yeah, hit, hit and run, it becomes like a lot more safer viable. than it would be otherwise. Um, so stuff like that. And then yeah. uh, based on when you time your jump on stealing, you can actually you get a perfect timing, and that'll result in almost always a stolen. In, in an old Nintendo like family computer, you yeah, know? like the yeah. black and white, and yeah. Yeah. You, you just keep going back and forth, and you can just keep running for <laughs> for the whole four bases easily. <laughs> so every time you just spawn, and you can you just spawn, you almost get your hit, like as you yeah. said, 70%. It's pretty much true. And then you don't have to stop, just keep running, and then just keep going back and forth, keep back and forth. Every hit is a home run. Right. Right. That's what happened before. Yep. Uh, but one thing to note about stealing is stealing third base, even though it's extremely rare in Major League Baseball, it's, it's even rarer in this game to actually work. So it would be pointless to try. <laughs> it's, I don't think I've ever done it successfully once. So unless there's an error or something like that. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to talk about player rankings for our last thing, just for a little bit of fun. Um, there's a little video clip on how uh, players are ranked and how the game sort of measures player performance by default, by default. So you can see that, you can go through each of the captains here, and you can see that uh, they have special talents 
It shows the star pitch and star swing. It shows the trajectory that they're most likely to hit the ball. So it actually comes into pretty okay detail. Uh, those four measures there, batting, pitching, fielding, and running, are based out of 10. So you can see, you can't really see exactly, but relatively, you know, I see that John Count probably has like an 8 out of 10 batting, 7 out of 10 pitching, stuff like that. So uh, you can see that all characters have all different abilities. They have all different trajectories. So it's actually somewhat detailed, more detailed than you might expect for a Mario sports game. So it's, it's actually, uh, there's a lot to it. And a lot of characters, we didn't even talk about abilities. They all have different abilities. Let's so say like uh, Diddy Kong there, his ability called Glamber would allow him to climb on an outfield wall and make a catch. So like, just imagine like someone scaling a green monster and it'll be the show. Uh, so that's, the one, that's the one where you do all the things. You can find like a ladder and kind of like make a catch. But uh, a lot of that is, is very true. So that's how the, uh, the stats have sort of panned out there. So you have these default statistics in the game, um, and then you, we added on that star factor constant. And uh, to determine the best characters, there's really no way to do this without just playing an absurd amount of games over and over and over, keeping a bunch of stats, and uh, coming up with some numerical way to determine which character is the best. Uh, Fortunately, Josh and I have played a ton of games, so we haven't played probably enough of a sample size. That was just talking about sample size. We haven't played enough sample size to uh, make a definitive call, I'd say. You have to play like thousands and thousands of games. Uh, but we came up with something that's pretty okay versus AI opponents, if, for, what it, for what it's worth. Um, for what it's worth. Uh, again, this is versus AI opponents. Versus human humans. players would be able to pick up on things very differently. They have, and they have more trouble with certain things. Right. But since the uh, human skill would be dependent on a lot of things, the AI is sort of a program constant, so we decided to go with AI. Um, so you see hitting. Uh, this is actually pretty directly correlated to the star factor thing that we found. Um, players with that higher star factor actually do end up being better uh, hitters and pitchers for the most part. So it's actually pretty cool how uh, we came up with these results. Um, again, this is, again, we could go through and play thousands of games and assign some numerical constant, but uh, this is just from personal experience, from playing a ton. And uh, it would probably, if we were to actually do this uh, systematically, it might come out to be pretty close. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? But <laughs> just, uh, just a little fun to try to rank all yeah. the players. Again. Um, and then again, we only limited to team captains. There's a ton of players. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of the roster at the end there, but there's like, there are definitely 30 plus players in the game. So, uh, it, would be, it would take a long time. How is the Well, because she, yeah, I know that's true, but she um, really struggles in uh, certain areas. She struggles in running. I think she's yeah, really she's rather slow. That's the one. That's her one weakness. Is she right. she doesn't run very fast. Yeah, see, so you can see like a character like Mario and Luigi are not. See, they're not in any of them, but but because really they're all the like game. even, even, even. You know, they're all like six out of ten, six out of ten, six out of ten, six out of ten type of stuff. But uh, and their star abilities are very useful. And their star abilities, abilities are, abilities are, are also very useful. useful. Or strength. So, yeah. This one, uh, against the AI. Especially. Against the AI, yes, definitely. Especially against the AI. Cool. So, uh, we came up with something to tie it into actual baseball and talk about something that actually matters. Um, Stay interested in fantasy baseball. Uh, you can see that, I think uh, you guys actually talked about this two weeks ago, was it? Or <laughs> whenever the last uh, presentation was. About how can you apply sabermetric statistics to fantasy baseball? And the answer is you can and you can't. Uh, because a lot of fantasy baseball things use old school stats. They use RBIs, which we know in sabermetrics is complete nonsense. Um, they use ERA, they use stuff like that. They use average, um, which are very old school style baseball stats. Um, <laughs> something like Mario baseball or even fantasy baseball uh, would do the same thing. They'd use, they'd use those old school stats, whereas we know that sabermetrics might be a more accurate predictor of actual baseball, of how a pitch, of how a player actually performs. Um, I think a good example to bring up is the MVP voting for AL. How uh, <laughs> I know it's somewhat controversial, but um, not that both players, not that neither player deserves it, Miguel Cabrera and Mike Trout, but um, a lot of the defensive considerations were not yeah. taken into account because depending on how much you trust Ultimate Zone rating, Robinson Cano was better than Cabrera. Yeah, Robinson so. Cano could have been in the discussion as well. So um, I think just. Uh, because of the old school style of doing MVP voting and the fact that everyone votes and the fact that everyone would see Triple Crown and just like automatically check off that box or whatever. Uh, you know, who knows? But 
both players are fantastic, obviously, but um, it's just a little, little tie-in with that. Yep. And uh, a game like Mario Baseball, or even any video game-related baseball simulation, would probably be the same idea. You'd want players with high RBIs, you'd want players with high average. Whereas in a normal, you know, building a baseball team, that may not be the case. Because yeah. so, RBIs is so situational, as we know. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much the end. Um, one more thing is if you just want to read more on Mario Superstar Baseball, if you care, uh, there is uh, the Mario Wiki you can go to, the Wiki yeah. page, which is where we got a lot of our stats and information from. Uh, it's actually pretty reliable. Uh, I checked it with the game and it seemed, it seemed reliable, so it was good. And there's also a video walkthrough if you want to check it out. Uh, you might recognize the author of said walkthrough. So. <laughs> just saying. Um, so that's Mario Superstar Baseball as, as far as sabermetrics go. Uh, does it really mean anything? Probably not. But was it a lot of fun to do and it was worth exploring? Yeah, it was. Um, and it's, it would be really cool to actually do this with a realistic baseball game and see if it actually comes up right, but who knows. Because realistic baseball games don't adjust for you know season to season changes and all that sort of stuff. So who knows if it would actually be good. But we have a basis of Mario Baseball, so if anyone would want to continue the research and uh, play thousands and thousands of games and <laughs> compile all these stats for some purpose, then uh, I guess this would be the ground. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's Mario Baseball. Oh, that's Thanks. great. Thank you.